Hi, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Comics in Marietta, California, and I'm here to talk to you about all things geeky. <laughs> so we're, first we're gonna talk about the good and the bad and the ugly. Every week we're gonna try to talk about this and many other things, but I like to break down what's good, bad, and really ugly in the industry. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the good. We're gonna talk about Batman, Death of the Family. Joker has gone insane. If you haven't been reading the Batman series, you haven't been reading comics, really. Scott Snyder has taken this to a whole nother level, and I'm so excited what they're doing right now. The newest issue just came out this week. Joker just finally got to Batman's last nerves. He brought out a platter. We don't know what's inside of it. <laughs> it's so exciting. Every issue's on the, you're on the edge of your seat. I can't believe that DC actually went this direction. They're doing things with, with Joker that I never thought I would see on actual pages. I can't believe that they're doing all the graphic things they're doing, all the hidden innuendos. If you're not reading Batman right now, <laughs> it's top tier, so you gotta check it out. And now we're gonna talk about the bad. There's a lot of bad things that happen in, in comic book universe, but the one thing I didn't really like was the way Marvel went about their relaunch. They just relaunched all their titles to number one, and it's kind of upsetting because they didn't really do it in a smooth fashion as DC did and just did it all in one month. They've done it over a three month period. They didn't give readers really the information they wanted on some of the titles that they're bringing out. Cable and X-Force. It sounds like that's gonna be the next X-Force book, but it's not. So they did a kind of tricky things and it was kind of hard to follow. You can always ask any comic book retailer where, where to start or where you can go. But I didn't really like the way they transitioned over to what they're doing now. And then this takes us into the ugly. The ugly part, the ugliest part of this Marvel relaunch is Superior Spider-Man. How are you gonna start at 698? <laughs> Not even talk about what happened in 698 and 699 and 699.1, and then go into 700 and kill the biggest character in Marvel history, and not even give us a good explanation. Mind change? What is that? No. How many times have we seen that? You're gonna use the most cliche change. This isn't Freaky Friday. This isn't Lindsay Lohan. This is Peter Parker. We need to we need to see him in the bi the biggest and boldest moves possible. And we get to now now we have Superior Spider-Man. No one likes Doc Ock. We've grown to hate Doc Ock. <laughs> if you're a Peter Parker fan, you don't you, you always want to see Doc Ock lose. And now we have to watch, now we have to read a book where we have to support him. I understand it's Peter, Bucky, Peter Parker's body. So even when I'm reading it, I'm still kind of rooting for him, but I, deep down inside, I, I kind of want him to fail. Him talking to Mary Jane, it always it's kind of creepy. It's like you have this old mind talking to this young woman. And then didn't didn't Doc Ock try to get married to Aunt May? And now that's his mother? That's really weird. So I think that's the ugliest thing that Marvel could have done in this uh, new generation of, of, of Marvel now. Now we're gonna do the rundown of the news. Arnold Schwarzenegger as Conan the Barbarian. Arnold, you're way too old for this, man. You just need to retire. You are the governor, you are not <laughs> Conan the Barbarian anymore. You're talking about doing a buddy action team up with The Rock? Let's let The Rock be Conan the Barbarian. You're just too old and decrepit. You could be a good background character or you could pass a torch on to The Rock, that would be really cool. But right now, we don't need to see you on screen swinging an axe and a, and a sword and, and saving the day and getting the girl. Your time has passed, my friend. So let's just, let's, just keep it, let's just keep you out of the theaters and keep the young blood as Conan the Barbarian. And then next, Star Wars. Really, guys? All you Star Wars fans, I love you guys so much. Trying to get the Death Star part of, funded by the federal government? You know Obama wasn't going to go for that. 36,000 people voted on a survey saying they would, they, or sorry, a petition that they wanted the Death Star to actually be funded. How much? 850 quadrillion dollars. Do you, you guys, out of all the things we can vote on, you're gonna vote on getting the Death Star? I like your thinking. The regular show is doing a comic book just like Adventure Time. Adventure Time has been the big hit this year. Everyone's been coming in looking for it. It's probably one of the best selling independent books that I have here in the shop besides The Walking Dead. Adventure Time takes you to this whole upside down universe that everyone enjoys. The Cartoon Network show has been just off the chain. Comic Con, every convention I go to, it's everywhere. Regular show's right behind it right now, but I really don't think that it's really gonna have the same impact as Adventure Time has. It's, it's gonna piggyback on some of the sales, but don't be surprised because Adventure Time is all about visual, all about color. Regular show's all about content. It's all about the witty lines, and if you're not hearing it and the timing isn't right, I don't think it's gonna translate as well to the pages. Wizards of the Coast, Magic the Gathering. You guys are putting cards out way too early, I think. A lot of people love the spoilers you guys put out on uh, MTG, MTG Salvations. It's really cool, it's really nice. We get to see what's coming out soon, but you're doing it two months ahead of time. Basically, I feel like you're, you're saying all the cards you just bought now are worthless. Don't even, don't even buy those cards now. Don't even try to have fun with the game now. Don't even try to enjoy the game that's in front of you. 
always keep looking forward to the future and it's just getting old. You guys are doing it way too soon and it's becoming too automatic. We need to see a little bit more consistency on how you reveal product and the means you do it. I don't want to go to some third party website and on a game that I spent a lot of money on and get opinions from people that I don't even know about. So Wizards, please clean it up, help us out. Now we're going to go over this edition of Ryan's Picks. The first book we're going to talk about is Savage Wolverine. Every once in a while I got to talk about these kind of things just so you guys can know what I'm reading and what I'm getting into. And Salvage Wolverine is one of those books that I would really like everyone to jump on. Frank Chow is finally coming back uh, to a number one title and he hasn't done so since 2005 when he introduced Shaun of the She-Devil to a new generation. Shaun of the She-Devil is a very good character, Frank Chow draws her very well and you know me and Shaun that works here at the shop were joking that Frank Chow only came back to Marvel just to do, just so, so he can draw Shauna again. So really good title, the art is amazing, the storyline very, very driven. Uh, it takes place in the Savage Land. You definitely, for all your Wolverine fans, he's hacking, he's slashing, he's doing everything he can to really show that he's Wolverine. Plus he's in his old school outfit, so if you're a, a Wolverine fan, you really enjoy that. The next song I'm gonna talk about is New Avengers. The New Avengers has been my favorite title since about 2005. New Avengers now is taking it, the thing I like about New Avengers, they take it back for, for the last seven years. They always implement new things, but they always stay true to their original continuity. And the thing I'm talking about now is the Infinity Gauntlet. They introduced the Infinity Gauntlet years and years ago, and now they're bringing it back. The different members, they all have a different gem right now, and they're finally bringing it together to finally use the Infinity Gauntlet to defeat evil. And this hasn't been done because humans can't control it. So it's really interesting to see where they're going. The Illuminati's back in, in New Avengers, and that can always say bad things for the bad guys. So the last side I'm gonna talk about is Todd, the ugliest kid on Earth. Brand new title from Image, it's number one, really good. It's one of these sleeper titles that I think you guys might be missing out on. It's exactly how it sounds. It's about the ugliest kid on earth. There's definitely a sick twist in it. It's definitely not for kids. So if, you're, if, you, if you like a little humor, you like a little gore, you like a little mystery, Todd, the ugliest kid on earth is your, is your book you need to read. If you have any comments or questions or concerns or anything you want to see us change, please let us know. We're just starting to do this. Any, any feedback is awesome. So just let us know and we're just trying to bring more information to you and the information you want. So thank you again and don't forget to come check us out. Um, we're always gonna be wearing different shirts. I'm gonna try to wear a different shirt every episode. Today I got the Bane on. You know, any shirt that I wear, we we'll always have selling in the shop. So if you like, if you like what I'm wearing, come down. We have it in your size. And uh, we'll see you later.